I think we know what kind of paladin that is going to be, as well as warlock going to be brought as oh, well. Yes, so yeah. we've not seen a warlock yet tonight. We haven't, and uh, yeah, if it's the same paladin as last week, obviously Jean is bringing that secret paladin. He brought it first week as well. I mean, it's kind of his thing, isn't it? And he, he actually got a win with it last week, so he's probably bringing it again. Everything else seems like a safe pick. We we didn't see Raven last week, so we're not entirely sure what he brought. I know that. I, th I think he submitted a face hunter deck similar to Green Sheeps, so maybe he'll go with that again. It doesn't look like a meme list to me. He looks like he's brought some very competitive decks. Um, like you said, Hunter running that secret list, likely going to be face hunter if he's got the inclusion of things like Leroy Jenkins. That seems to be the popular variant these days. Uh, people have kind of found a way to revert back to going face with Hunter, which is obviously the way that we always know Hunter will go. Druid and Warrior. Just two very solid classes right now. Um, could be Control or could be Dragon. We have seen both in the uh, series this week. And obviously Druid has had a, a couple of variants floating around like the Beast, the Token, the Malagos, all of which are still quite popular. And I presume it's probably Zoo for Jambre. I mean, yeah. considering his kind of play style, I think that would make more sense. But maybe he wants to throw a spanner in the works, bring something like a Dragon Warlock, a Reno Warlock. I mean, you never know. Dragon, Reno Warlock even? Combine the two? That is that is a scary thing that does happen at tournaments, yeah, apparently. It is a real thing. But Also, the Druid. I believe last week Jambre bought a Beast Druid, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So... Wouldn't be too surprised to see a very aggressive lineup in general because we know that John Bray's paladin, that secret paladin, loves to play for the early It was game. the week before, I think, but yeah, he, he likes to bring these aggressive decks. I think it was, it was Tempo Mage he brought last week, um, so he ju he does like to get that kind of early aggression. I went and then did some because obviously John Bray made this deck very popular uh, through a through a uh, let's say a, a, a useful resource card site on the internet that rhymes with Dearth Dawn. Um, <laughs> does it rhyme with Dearth Dawn? I'm not sure it does at all, in fact. <laughs> Girth Thorborn. I don't know. It, anyway, it's it's a useful uh, a useful resource on the internet. It is. And um, I went and read his entire guide because I, I just I, I'd like to know how you know Jean thinking, where he came with this deck, you know where where it all started from. Found an interesting fact: he subbed out one of the Argent Commanders for a long time because he just didn't own two. <laughs> <laughs> so he would replace it's, the card. Isn't it, isn't it blue? Isn't it like yeah, it's, it's, a rare, it's, a rare, it's a rare card. But uh, one of his, everyone was asking, oh, why don't you just run two Argent Commanders? And, and one of his replies was, I don't own two. <laughs> Which I thought was quite wow. great. I, I mean, you know, we've all been there at some point in our Hearthstone careers. Everybody's had that situation, especially... When new expansions come out, like uh, Wizards win. of the Old Gods, when you first get it, you're like, okay, which legendary did I get in my first few sets? It's funny, We're when, I, start, when I started Hearthstone two years ago, I had no cards, and I probably spent about £200 just buying packs so I could become competitive, at least, you know, at least try and be competitive on the higher ends of ladder. I think right. if Commitment. any competitive player says that they are a free-to-play player, I would call them a liar. And, yeah, and opening packs is fun. I mean, I just enjoy throwing money at it because it's good fun. Yeah. Anyway, enough about buying packs. We are not actually trying to sell you guys Hearthstone cards at this no, moment. No, we are. But let's take that a look commission. at the... <laughs> <laughs> secretly being paid by Blizzard. <laughs> let's take a look at uh, the predictions, right? Or take a look. I suppose I need to ask you guys for those. What are your predictions coming into this series? Uh, I think that Jean Bray will win this one 3 2 and put himself in good nick or well, at least a good chance of qualifying. I don't know. I think Jean Bray's decks are risky um but yeah i think i, I feel like this is his entire style though really. yeah but i think john bray probably wins i'd like john bray to win because it gives a better storyline so three three one to john bray i also noticed that because my colors are a bit funny i look like an 80s disco dj <laughs> i feel like you always do mate i feel like you always do deep down like, 80s disco dj is something that comes right from here right right from here anyway <laughs> my prediction i'm gonna go with john bray as well because I mean, when you look at the scoreboard, I feel like John Bray's earned our predictions since he's doing slightly better than Raven. So that's the way I'm going to go. Everybody going for Torpedo, but it would have been the same regardless. Of I think Torpedo GG are going to come out on top in this series. Yeah, I think you're I right said Torpedo that. GG again. It didn't mean that. Sorry, Torpedo. <laughs> Sorry, Torpedo <laughs> GG. <laughs> Either way, let's head on. I was just saying good game at the end of it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, well, anyway. Uh, this is, this should be an interesting matchup, I think that's safe to say. It's, it always is with Jambray in the game. He just brings such peculiar decks a lot of the time. I'm curious to see whether he'll just bring safer variants of the decks he's bringing just to throw his spanner in the works. That would be a really cool mind game to play because everyone kind of expects him to bring like this secret paladin. They expect the aggressive decks. If he just brought something else to start things off, that certainly could be 
kind of a, a spanner in the works for his opponent, but it's going to be Zoo by the looks of things. Is Raven playing from not a hotel room? I think he's playing from home. He is back at home yes. in the comforts of his luxurious chair. But it is going to be, like Munchable said, it's going to be the Zoo and it's going to be Disco Zoo. Get out your mirror balls. Luckily, Kiernan's on the scene with his DJing skills straight from the 80s. And so straight from the 80s. This just looks like Ramp Druid for Raven. Oh! Yeah, does Ramp, does Ramp Druid run Curator? I guess why not? I mean, it's, it's extra card draw. I, yeah, I have seen Ramp Druid's running Curator because you've got um, your Azure Drakes in there, right? And you've could, got your Druid of the Claws. Yep. You could even drop us a Finley if you really wanted and look for, like, Just the hero. Run out the better hero, hero power. power. You could look for the warrior hero power, sorry. Bit of a clunky hand from John Bray. He's got a Malkazar Imp. Mm. You could just drop Direwolf Alpha though. Yeah, I agree. I never really feel great dropping Direwolf Alpha when it only affects one minute. It's a bit like playing um, Flame Tongue Totem on turn two for Shaman. I never yeah. feel great. It, on the same token though, it plays like a Taunt. It's like dropping a 2-2 two, two Taunt almost. Or it's, it's like dropping a 3-2 Taunt. Because mm. everyone wants to deal with that. Speaking of dropping a Taunt, I mean, Innovate is obviously huge for Raven, because otherwise his hand was looking clunkier than Jambres. Well, that's the only reason he coined out um, Wild Growth, because he had the opportunity to innovate out of 5-drop. You said clunkier than Jambres like it was a turn of phrase there. <laughs> it's like looking clunkier than Jambres. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be able to get out a uh, Judith the Claw. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, like it, mean, it means he doesn't take 4 damage, right? Uh, yeah, it also plays around like a power overwhelming trade. Does not have to juggle in hand there as well as another Marcusar's imp. This is so risky. Hey, like, judging by where the arrow went. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you you trade the um you trade. Oh my yeah. goodness! This so, is straight up ramp dragon druid. Well, it's just I think it's just ramp druid, but with deathwing. Oh right, okay. I've, I've seen a few people running Deathwing instead of Yogg, just because it's essentially it can do the same thing. It removes a board and puts a big threat. And also something the curator draws, right? Exactly. It's another way to just use that curator to find ways to win the game in the end. Uh, curator, of course, it's golden as well because it's Raven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess going face and doing that play is fine because you, you're not expecting. I mean, you get out of jail free, by, but get out of jail free here by not having a, a, a wrath from Raven or or a swipe, for instance. And, and now Jumbo is probably feeling a little bit better, especially with the pickup of the Dark Peddler there. Yeah, he needed something there. I mean, both power overwhelmings, whilst they're not great to be in the hand, I mean, just there as a finisher could be great. I find it interesting that he's running both power overwhelmings. We said this last time with his zoo that he had. Both power, power overwhelmings and both soul fires, and it was we saw that insane burst come out to start the game off. This time he's not been quite so lucky. Both of those in hand. If he finds any of that discard, you know he'll discard one of these power overwhelmings. Obviously he has Markstar's imps on the board, so it's not the end of the world for him, but still doesn't feel great. I'm gonna assume you take possessed villager here. I think possessed villager is the best. Slightly more resistant to swipe, which is something that you always like to be concerned with when playing against the druid. I mean, actually, Deathwing's a very good tool against Zoo, if it does get to that later it's stages of the game. Absolutely. Okay, ooh, there's a... Oh, that draws from um, Curator, the Savage Combatant. I think this is basically a Curator druid. <laughs> At this point, most of the cards in the deck seem to be based around... Uh, or seem to be drawable, at least, by Curator. Just no Murlocs just yet. I want to see that Murloc come out, just for the full Curator value. Here we go, Power of One, we're going to come into play, though, to deal with the Acid Drake. Fairly simple turn to play here for Jambray, and as well, he's relatively out of range of swipes still, as well. He will have that 1-1 one, one on the board that can die to it, but other than that, everything else is hard to deal with. Absolutely. Next turn looks like a either Savage Combatant, Hero Power, or Moonglade Portal pending draw here for Raven. I think out of the two, I'd rather do Savage Combatant, Hero Power, because you know what you're putting on the board and you know you can deal with the threat. This is a really weird deck from Raven. I mean, it, it, it's like a, it, I think it's like a Beast Ramp Druid. A from, Beast Ramp with Dragon Druid. Deathwing and maybe a Murloc as well, just to make Munch happy. I really want him to have I guarantee, I really want him to play it and just Sir Finley pops up and Munch is validated. Oh, yes. 
I become the doomsayer I always wanted to be. So, well, you know, as Zoo, you're probably thinking, I'd love to have something that isn't a one drop. <laughs> That's far. That's not a one drop. And that feels all right to play if you play the gang boss with an abusive sergeant onto your dark peddler. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Kind of playing swipe a little bit, just because you've got a four health minion and a one one available, or a couple of one ones available as well. Mm, but you don't deal with the Malkazar's imps, and you still get a one one out of the two four. So. Swipe is like leaving the Druid with three mana, which to be honest, three mana is like the worst mana for Druid to have, because that always feels clunky. Come on, Curator or Ancient of War. I wanna see I wanna see Sir Finley. I mean I think out of the two you play Ancient of War, it's just because you don't really need to refill your hand right now. Could this by any stretch of the imagination be some sort of weird astral communion druid? Maybe. This, I, this feels I pretty good. There's too many cards in the deck that aren't super huge threats, I guess. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I feel like... Hard is going to get out of this. He's gonna get, yeah, he's going to get two because he's got two Malkazar rooms, right? Yep. That's always going to feel pretty great. And also now has an answer for the Ancient of War. Refills his hand once and again. And gets a Void Walker to play at the end of it as well. If he wants to. I, I wouldn't be averse to just keeping hold of that Void Walker. Swipe is a card that exists. You know, like just... You're gonna, not you're gonna, overcommit. You're going to swipe the the five two anyway. I actually, if I'm if I'm not going to overcommit against any class, if I'm going to overcommit against any class, the class that I overcommit against is Druid because they yeah. they struggle dealing with a huge board. That is true. Here we go. Creator still a uh, creator curator still available, and basically at this point, Raven hoping that he can survive long enough to play Deathwing. <laughs> That's his win condition at this stage. We'll be able to drop an Enchanted Raven as well, just to try and contest this board. No Murloc, sorry mate. Oh, this is this is solid, because... Do you want to discard the... Yeah, Castle totally. you got two Malkazars, you could search for so another... You could search for lethal, another Soulfire yeah. would be lethal. In fact, does he even have does he have lethal? Like, I think that's something he's considering. It's not quite. Defender of Argus might make it so. Uh, I think Defender of Argus does, because I, yeah, Defender certainly has 11 damage on board. That would make it 13, plus the Soulfire. Yep, I, I believe that is lethal. As long as you trade right. Yeah, it is lethal. Any of the one threes, obviously, because... Yeah, we are. There we go. So a good start for Jean Bray and the start he needed to push himself closer towards that middle grounds with Green Sheep on the 3-3. Three, three. Uh, an interesting deck from Raven. It does seem like a kind of a ramp beast-ish druid. <laughs> it's just like a ramp druid, but with cards that can get drawn with curator I guess I mean I think it's, it's curator it, druid I it just definitely draw could stuff. work I just don't think zoo is its best matchup yeah I mean it definitely feels like one of those decks that if I mean similarly with your standard ramp druid what we were talking about earlier against the control warrior matchup if you could just slam those threats down consistently they don't have enough to deal with it if you can find yourself in that situation looks great you know, you've got ridiculous threats available to yourself it, however it looks like yeah you're right it looks like classic ramp with enchanted ravens I, well, I mean, you could just sub sub out your living roots, right, for Enchanted Raven, just to have more board presence. Uh, yeah. Like that. Maybe because there's Curator and there is Beasts that he maybe runs Mark of Ishaj as well, so you just have this sort of like, you know, when I, um, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say it's a normal deck. I'm no, not no, trying no, to no. say I've seen it before. <laughs> I'm just trying to validate. It. Well, you know, um, Ness when he won the True Silver tournament, he brought basically what was like a on curve mid range Warlock. Maybe it's a little bit like that. You just have a, you just have something to play every turn. It's when you get two decks and you just mush them together and hope for the best. Maybe that's what he's doing. Getting two decks and mushing them together. Well, he didn't sub out the living roots. I can eat my words. Maybe it's... Did we see two copies of any one card? Oh, <laughs> I mean, for a second I was oh thinking, my God. is it a Reno? But then, I don't know. Well, we didn't. You're right, we didn't see Did we see not see two, two copies of any one card? <laughs> It can be Reno oh Druid. My goodness. <laughs> you know when I said Raven's one of these competitive players that would bring <laughs> decks that aren't. I really hope I really hope he draws Reno. That would be that would make my life. Well has a I I hate making the trade. Fiery Bat is one of the most frustrating cards. Yeah. Do you know I what mean... else is? Huge Toad. Indeed. And Flame Juggler. And Flame Juggler. And Knife Juggler. <laughs> There's Act a theme all. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to make that play because you want to play Mar Keeper for turn three. 
But at the same time, part of you deep down really wants to just hero power so you can get at least one 1-1 one, one surviving for definites. But I think my keeper... I mean, do you ramp again here? You don't have anything in hand to ramp to, but we know that Raven, most of his cards in this deck are pretty hefty. Ramp, ramp feels nice, nice, but swipe just feels too good, man. Like, yeah, I was thinking, do I do you swipe here? But do you need to? Because you can just hero power, sure, and it, it does the same power. thing, yeah. right, with Wrath. Okay, he's just going to take out the Toad, and then he's going to play the Mario Keeper. Okay. Yeah. I like it. It means you get... Complete board control. So you use your entire hand, Diggs. <laughs> worth, worth what? it. As long as you get a six drop this turn, it's completely worth it. But I mean, in a situation like that, when you've got a hand that Raven had, it's you don't have that many options to use your entire hand. And that's one of the downsides of Innovate. You know, everyone says how great of a card Innovate is, and 99% of the time it is. But when you get a hand like this, where you have to Innovate just to do something, it just means that you run out of cards very quickly. It's a nice draw for Raven, but Deadly Shot can deal with this pretty effectively. Yeah, I think you just Deadly Shot, don't you? I mean, you could you could Houndmaster I suppose and then kill it, because I guess Houndmaster then puts a threat on, on the board. I suppose, with all, I suppose with all the big threats that yeah. Raven's got, maybe Deadly Shot is more effective later on. I, I really want to know what type of Druid this is. I Just because I've never seen it, like it's one of those things you have to kind of work out as you go. Maybe it's a, a Raven Druid, and he's put in the Enchanted Raven as his namesake. That would, that would not surprise me as something that Raven might probably do. Well, there's Ragnaros, which is going to be a nice turn 8 play, and at the moment there's not really a turn for Jambre. Barnes is a turn, though. Yeah, and if Ragnaros comes down next turn, it's dealt with quite nicely by Deadly Shot as well, so holding on to that was good. And, oh, and that is a, uh, a yeah. very good card to pull off the Barnes. And Rag will inevitably hit the 1-1 one, one as well. So. Did we see two Savage oh, Combatants Oh, that's what I'm thinking about. Turn. Yeah, maybe we did see two Savage last Combatants. Game. So that, will, that makes me think it's not, not a Reno deck. I, I, I actually did... Um, I actually did trigger that as soon as I saw that that yeah. Savage Mountain come because I think we saw one come down and then he got one from the curator as well. So my hopes and dreams of it being Reno Druid are I mean, over. There is a possibility that you run a couple of duplicates in a Reno deck. No, that's true. You draw them before Reno. You're laughing. The dream is not dead, boys. But at the moment, Ravens isn't looking too great with that deadly shot. It did punish the... Well, that's curator. I would have laughed, laughed so hard if he top decked Reno there. <laughs> <laughs> Just to... Prove us wrong, but here we go. Does not have a Murloc. Oh, no Murlocs, my friend. Disappointed. But does have a Deathwing in hand now for next turn. So, <laughs> Jambre, if he commits to board right now, will be a very sad person. What's the best? What's the best case scenario here? Do you hope for Huffer? Because I mean, actually, if Deathwing does come down, we've already seen a deadly shot. It becomes quite a problem for Lejean. It does become quite a problem for Lejean. El Jambro. Yeah, do it. I think you just have to do thing. I mean, do it. Look at the Ooh. situation right okay. now that you've got. Mm, the thing is, these two cards have been in Jambre's hand for a fair few turns. Just slap I the think death it's wing. safe to assume that they are removal. Just slap the death wing. Play the golden monkey. <laughs> Play the golden monkey. Well. It's going to go for the Ancient of War. So if Jambre is unhappy with the Ancient of War, he's going to be even more I unhappy can, next turn. I was going to say, I can't say I blame him. He does have removal in hand, but... This is the thing, and this is why I think Raven did play yeah. it first, because it forces any so, removal. Have you got another deadly shot? Have you got anything else? Do it now. This is your opportunity, and then next turn, when you don't have any, I'm just going to hit you in the face with the 12-12. But I guess, can he put himself in a situation where he has lethal just straight off? Not quite, is the answer. He's one away. No, he's not. Okay, he's three away. Three away. Play the death wing. Yeah, it's going to go for it. I was just trying to work out whether Savage Combatant and Moonglow Portal could be a good turn, but I don't... You couldn't use the hero power with it, so it's... I mean, you, you play high main here and you hope that the jury doesn't get a swipe and then you're in pretty good nick. It's basically now a game of who draws the damage first, but the hunter would be technically in the better position because... 
At the same time, though, he's used a lot of uh, removal already. We haven't seen a swipe from Raven. Oh, wait, no, we have seen one swipe, sorry, from Raven. And a Wrath. That's not... That's not Falco. It's it not. is not. And that will be Jambray going to null up. Jambray taking that one. That's his Hunter out of the way as well. And now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's just his Paladin remaining. So I did message one of the uh, torpedo guys in the break, specifically ball control, and said, do you know what Ray Raven's deck is? Because I would love to know what the idea behind it is. I uh, haven't had a response yet, but as soon as I do, everybody... You got me all excited. By the way, ball control, if you're, if you're watching, which I know you are, read your messages. I'd like to know what this deck list is. Yeah, it, I'm interested to see what the like goal behind this deck is, but so far, not really working out for Raven. 2-0 down, and... John Bray moving on to his deck that's it's kind of his namesake. Well, we think so. if it is the Secret Paladin, yeah. perhaps he brings something like an Enzoth Paladin or a, a anything Paladin to try and throw off his my, opponent. My, my fabled Dragon Paladin. Yeah, I, yeah. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's, it's not, not going to happen, is it? No. It's mo I think it's almost certainly going to be his little Secret Paladin that he loves to bring with the Dragon Eggs and everything. It's it's still I, it's still relevant. It's still good. It's got good win percentages. People are hitting 60% on, on ladder with it. You know, mm -hmm. people are publishing a lot of stats. Leroy absolutely loves it as well. So he's been playing a lot of that on ladder. And especially when you've been the one that's coined this deck. I mean, Jean Bray was famous for Egg Paladin back in the day. He, he is the guy that basically, you know, created this. Um, so to them bring it back, you know, and, and it's a bit like when Ball Control had Tempo Warrior. He, he rode that Tempo Warrior until it just was no longer relevant. I imagine Jean Bray is probably going to have a, a similar sort of run with his particular particular Paladin. It is strong, you know. It, it, it's proven on ladder that it's got a good win rate, so. And well, I think we might just be seeing it again here as the Argent Horse Riders and Argent Commander come on through. <laughs> Pirate Warrior. Pirate Warrior. Raven. You know earlier when I said uh, Raven I, likes to bring competitive decks. I will not have a word <laughs> spoken against Pirate Warrior. This is one of my personal favorite decks. I I absolutely that says a lot about it. you. <laughs> right. I started playing Pirate Warrior back in beta when it was absolutely garbage. So the fact that you can run Pirate Warrior in a tournament and take away a win with it in Conquest means to me that everything is validated. Yeah, can you run Pirate Warrior in a tournament no much more? <laughs> That's what I, I mean. Learned. People do, unfortunately. I mean, it is. It, it can get you that win. And I guess this is probably one of its worst matchups, though. What a nice picture that is of Raven. Look at him. Cheeky chappy. Oh, he's got a, got a cute little face going on. I mean, Pirate Warrior, if, if you're going to play against anything, playing against aggro is probably good for you. If you're playing against control that has a lot of removal and can kind of get out of range of your your aggro as well then it's going to be it's going to be tough i really think raven in that picture wants to say hi i'm billy mays <laughs> but actually hi i'm torpedo raven i don't know who billy mays is you don't know who billy mays is it's an infomercial guy from america who died he died now unfortunately oh, so wait to live with the tune. it's a it's a may may that's what it is nice early start though for raven a lot of pressure and but typically, the Secret Paladin doesn't really deal well with pressure. I mean, you, you do have those weapons, I guess, but... Rallying Blade's going to be nice next turn, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. I, that, I, I mean, that was the end of my nice. sentence, but <laughs> I, by how I said it, it sounded like it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, Rallying Blade feels pretty great. You puff up, you get some nice trades here, you also get to kill some of the weapon. It's, it's all good. It's all gravy, baby. And that's the beauty of that Silent Knight Rallying Blade combo, if you can actually get it. Yeah, it always turns out pretty nicely. So Finley comes through, but again, the rest of your turn does not feel amazing. No, I mean, typically Raven's probably going to just ignore any minions and continue to go face. And yeah. But his hand now looks ugly. You don't have any weapons, which is kind of where... The majority of your synergy with the Pyro Warrior comes through, apart from having pirates, of course. Uh, you really want to be getting basically increased durability and damage on those weapons, and like you said, he's just going to go straight for face. And I've, I mean, that is Pyro Warrior in a nutshell. You don't have another win condition except go face, so. I mean, actually, I think John is probably running, like rubbing his hands together at this point in time. I mean, oh, wow. yes, okay, he's on 17 HP. But with no weapons in the hand of Raven, I mean, this is just looking pretty disgusting now. 
Let's hope he picks up. He's probably going to... Oh, none of those are great, really. Uh, ping doesn't feel too bad. No, it doesn't feel awful, but... But with Mysterious Challenger in the hand now for Jambra as well, he's slowly just going to get so much board presence that regardless if Raven continuously goes face, he's just going to struggle to finish that, just finish him off. I don't know how accurate that is, you know. Because one thing I've found, having played a lot of Pirate Warrior, is so many times you get in this situation where you've not found a weapon, but you've got them relatively low, and that's all that matters. Because Mortal Strike is a card that exists, There's and so is Heroic boss. Strike. Well, there is Arcanite, Arcanite Reaper, Reaper comes on through. Just look at the damage he can just immediately put to face. It's actually disgusting. I think what was important was that he had the mana to to play it as well, because otherwise if he was taking that 5 damage to the Noble Sacrifice, that, that could have been disgusting. The just look at his hand right now. Like You're looking at lethal next turn. If you, you've got Leroy as well as a Heroic Strike, an Arcanite Reaper in hand, this deck is terrifying, I'm telling you. Competitive Spirit is very, very devastating, though. Yeah, but he doesn't die this turn. And there's no taunt available. No, you are very correct. He does have True Silver, which he will True Silver face, though. Let's have a look. So he's still lethal. Is he it still has lethal? 15 okay, damage well, yeah, from hand. I'm telling you, man, this lethal, deck is yeah. legit. Like, I was saying it from the start. Pirate Warrior is the way forward. Damn. I'm Pirate Warrior hype. I love it. I mean, I, I can't I can't even contest you. I'm going to take back all of my snide, suck, snarky <laughs> comments that I made about Pyro Warrior. Well, I said at the start, the one matchup that's good for Pyro Warrior is another aggressive deck, because you can just go face it. That's Mortal Strike as well, just to add insult to injury. But... Yeah, but Leroy comes through. That's just the Heroic Strike. Jambre can't believe it. Neither can my two analysts. I'm loving it. Arcanite, Fair play to you, Raven. Uh, uh, Pirate Warrior. Respect. Ar Arcanite Reaper kind of is the win card, though, for, yeah, for Warrior. If you, if, you, if you draw it, like, you can essentially, you know, do a huge amount of damage. I'm, I can't, I'm going to take back all those su horrible, sarcastic comments that I made. because I, I take back nothing. Nah. Still hate it. Still, <laughs> no, I mean, you've got to win. It got, I'm a, I, can't, I can't contest that. I still, I, I still wouldn't bring it to a tournament. I but. said before the series, if you can play Pirate Warrior, all you have to do is... You don't even have to draw that well. Pretty much every card in the deck is designed to just hit base and... I think Ignore taunts. Pirate Warrior is designed to make me really salty, so I don't like it. There's not many decks in the game that don't make you really That's true. salty. That. I think I, I get really salty at Hearthstone now, though. I think everyone does. Do you, do you want to know how to not get salty by playing Hearthstone? No. You play Pirate Warrior on ladder. And then you just... You then just you make other people Drink salty. the tears of everyone else on ladder as you honor. annihilate everyone. But here we go. Raven, back to the Druid once again. Well, we know where Munch gets his joy from. I love it. Crushing 15-year-old's hopes and dreams with Pirate Warrior. I mean, Munch pretending he doesn't get salty on the ladder is I, a big lie. <laughs> I don't even know what the word salt means. <laughs> Here we go, though. He gets alkaline on the ladder, that's what he gets. Alkaline's the opposite to acid, not to salt. <laughs> yeah, no, but our salts are alkaline. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> Most is salts it? are the pH of the other. Don't worry. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> Jake is just like, yeah, shut up, kidding. <laughs> right, so is Raven going to actually yeah, get a win? He's got the chance to ramp up nice and early, which is good. I think this is what this deck needs. But similarly uh, with the Zoo, this deck from Jambre can build up a board presence that can get kind of scary, and Druids naturally don't have that board clear. Yes, okay, you have the swipes, but it is hard to deal with a lot of damage with the swipes if there are Divine Shields there to block your way. Yeah, that is always going to be the case. But also, Rallying Blade with Silent Knife once again available for Jambre. Raven can't believe it. He's loving it. And, uh, well, fantastic start for Jambre. Got a Divine Shielded 3 3 on board as well as a weapon developed. You can mm. even consider a kind of overzealous so, so Pandora of Argus. I think you hear a power then, so, Wrath. So, sodium chloride isn't. Isn't isn't alkaline, Do but really but, but things like uh, alkaline salts that use for dishwasher detergent, they are. So maybe I was part. I'm gonna ban your phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to say I told you so, but it's not. It's some salts are alkaline. I feel like I bring the. I feel like you bring I bring it on yourself. You're wrong, and then you Google yourself, and you're like, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. It's like so you could true. just forget it, and no one would take any notice of yeah, it. I like Everyone would have forgotten that that conversation <laughs> happened. But you're like, oh, well, I googled it, and uh, yeah, no, I was wrong. <laughs> I wasn't totally wrong, though. Look at all these divine shields for Jambre. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, with, with another rallying block. <laughs> I love myself sometimes. <laughs> So you just go for... Oh, I, I would have been tempted to hit face with that rallying blade. Yeah, just to play the next one next turn. I think he's just looking at Defender of Argus, maybe. I have no time for games. But Raven's got no time for games. Right no. now. I Despite would, being I would. on Hearthstone. I also Wait, have oh, no time I guess for that's this. technically an eSport. Like I, I think that going face this time and then just rallying blade after uh, Argent Horse Rider, I feel like that's loads of value that you just can't pass up. Yeah. I, love, I love the value of Argent Horse Rider and another rallying blade. You haven't got the mana for it. Uh, you're right, because one of them's not two mana. Mm, you're correct. Gosh darn. Defender of Argus feels pretty alright. Pretty alright. It feels yep. pretty alright. <laughs> See, he works with a comma. It does. But not a coma. No. I'm sorry, Big difference I've, I've just and deviated now. everybody way off the beaten path. Unfortunately, I do not see a way back into this game for Raven now. Especially with Rallying Blade, another Defender of Argus. More and more face damage coming from Lejam. Innovate, innovate Ragnaros. Innovate, innovate Ragnaros is the play. And hit a Divine Shield. Yeah, or the 2 3. Or face. Probably face. <laughs> Jumbo is like, please don't be Ancient of War. And he's like, oh no, I'm not actually bothered about Ragnaros. No, that was the Ragnaros hitting right there when he... Uh... Yeah, it was the 2-3. Now he can play the Argent Horse Now Rider. he can do it. Now he gets the value. Now he gets the value. So, 9-12 damage straight on into face. Eek. And Ragnaros feels horrible into this board. Three Divine Shields to block him. Where's you that? do you do steal something as Sylvanas, though. Where's that Reno? Yeah, but it, it, Sod's Law, you're going to steal the Argent Squire that you kill yourself on. Um, yeah, but it's a taunt. Yeah. I mean, okay, actually, that's still a Still over. Still, still, yeah, still over. Either way, Jambre um, is going to win 3-1. He's going to put himself at 3-3 in the league, tie oh. himself up with Green Sheep. Yeah, okay, yeah, there's, there's literally no way. And that's putting himself in a good spot next week. I mean, with a win next week, there is still every chance that he could qualify. It's basically going to be down to him and Green Sheep now as to who can take that fourth spot pretty much. Yeah. Absolutely. This is actually starting to shape up now. We're starting to see who the players are that really don't have a chance now. Like